Welcome to your home practice for boosting immunity and resilience. My name is Rachel Jessian. I'm the founder of My Sacred Spine. And these sequence is designed to help keep you grounded body, mind, and spirit, which I think we all need a little bit more of right now in this time of great uncertainty. Um, the physical body holds on to fear and grief. So even if we're in a good space mentally with all of the uncertainty and the unknown that's going on amidst this pandemic, it can be uh, really challenging for the body to itself to feel safe. So we'll be exploring some ancient yogic uh, poses today, some breathing techniques, as well as some visualization and meditation meant to clear your energy field and make space for whatever it is you're feeling that day so that you can move with the emotions freely. Our limbic system, our emotional system is directly connected to our stress body. And when the body or the mind are feeling stressed, it severely lowers um, our ability to fight off colds, illnesses, viruses, and can eventually lead to developing diseases of many different kinds. So um, I hope that this practice serves you. We're going to start today uh, with some breathing and meditation techniques for the sequence. You're going to need to have a few things, so you can pause the video to gather them if needed. Um, you're gonna need a chair, any chair will do. Um, a couple of yoga blocks or matching books, you know, so two books that are relatively the same size would also work. I've also got a few blankets that I have here folded. So you can either have a blanket or a towel if you have something like that at home and maybe a pillow for your head if it's comfortable for you to rest on your back, you like to have something underneath your head and your neck. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'd like you to start in whatever seated position feels good for you. You can also start this lying down if you're feeling like you need some time to decompress uh, your back or even just you're feeling a little bit emotionally overwhelmed right now and you wanna lie down. So I'm gonna start uh, just by sitting cross-legged. Um, I'm actually gonna pick myself up on one of my blocks, just a little bit higher. And we're going to start with some heart-centered breathing. So just bringing both hands on top of the heart space and beginning to breathe into the palms. I'm not trying to alter the breath at all just yet, just observing the gentle inhalation and exhalation and seeing if you can allow each exhalation to bring you a little bit more release in the shoulders, in the jaw, the muscles of the face. Just starting to center our awareness in the heart space itself. And noticing how it is you're feeling today. Being present with whatever's there, whatever emotions you might be feeling whether it's grief or anger or numbness, just checking in, how is my heart today? Offering a moment of quiet observation, a welcoming presence, observing without judgment. A wonderful practice to do daily. You might even have a journal nearby that you can jot down a few words of just how you're feeling at the beginning of your practice. And then sliding the hands down to the low belly and starting to deepen the breath so that it sits a little bit lower in the torso. Feeling the gentle expansion of the belly. You might even imagine that your nose was located down at the belly as if you could breathe in through your navel. Deep belly breathing is so important because the lower we can breathe, the more our lungs are able to oxygenate. So especially if you have any kind of compromised breathing capabilities, you're dealing with any kind of back issues or scoliosis or anything that might make your ability to breathe deeply a little bit more challenging. Belly breathing can be a wonderful way to expand that capacity. 
So breathing nice and low. And we're gonna start by moving into what's called the three-part breath. So as we breathe in, we're breathing nice and low into the belly. And as you exhale, gently pulling the belly in towards the spine. I'm doing that for a few rounds, breathing in. And then gently pulling in the muscles of the abdomen. On your exhalation, you might bring a little bit of sound, a gentle sighing sound. Ha. It can help us exhale fully. It also gives us a nice vibration of sound to soothe the nervous system. So you can try that a few times. Ha. And then making our way up now to the second level. So I'm gonna breathe into the belly and gently let the belly fill and then start to expand into my low ribs. And then as I exhale, I'm gonna exhale from the low ribs and then back down to the belly. So we're breathing in from the bottom to the top, breathing in, gently expanding into the belly and then the low ribs, and then exhaling from the low ribs down to the belly. A few more rounds like that. And then exhaling from the low ribs to the belly. And now we're adding in the top. So breathing in from the belly, expanding into the low ribs, and then finally adding in the breath into the chest. And then exhaling from the chest to the low ribs to the belly. A couple of times like that, breathing in, filling from the belly to the low ribs into the chest and exhaling from the top to the bottom. Then adding in our visualization. So we're gonna imagine, visualize that that energy we're filling into the belly is coming up from the earth, filling that earth energy all the way in from the low ribs into the heart space. And then exhaling from the heart down through the lower belly down into the earth. So it's almost as if this earth energy could come in and rinse out our energy field. And each time we exhale, we're envisioning this light sliding back down into the earth, letting go of any stress or anxiety we might be holding on to. And this time as you're filling in, breathing in from the bottom to the top, filling the belly, the low ribs, the chest, imagine that light coming all the way up over the crown of the head. And as you exhale, exhaling down from the crown to the third eye, to the throat, to the heart, sliding down, solar plexus, down through the belly, into the root, all the way down to the earth. So we're breathing and pulling that light up from the earth, filling the belly, the ribs, the chest, all the way up to the crown of the head. And then exhaling down from the crown, all the way down, deep into the earth. And this time as you do it, you might add a little bit of breath retention. So as you breathe in, filling the entire field up with this light. And at the top, when you're full, you might hold the breath for a count of one or two, and then exhaling gently, sliding that visualization all the way back down to the root and holding the breath at the bottom of the exhalation for a count of one or two. Continue this way on your own for the next few moments. Breathing in from the bottom to the top and exhaling from the top to the bottom. And if holding the breath at all creates any kind of tension in the body, then just skip that. Continue with the visualization. You might be able to expand this retention practice over the next coming eight weeks. So you might try to hold it for a count of two or three or four, the top and the bottom of the inhalation and the exhalation but we don't wanna add any extra tension into the physical body. We're working on keeping the physical body relaxed and really expanding our lung capacity, our capacity to breathe and clearing out the energy field with this visualization. So gently letting that practice go and returning to your regular breath and just checking in. How am I feeling now after that short visualization? If you have any words or adjectives you want to write down in your journal, it could be a great practice to really solidify. We're solidifying to the mind 
what these practices are doing to our system. So when we write things down after we experience them, it helps our brain remember that when we're in times of stress or panic that we can turn to these practices. They're always readily available to us. The second breathing practice I wanted to show you was, um, um, it's actually a Qigong breath, but I really love it. And as someone who suffers with scoliosis myself, um, I do have a reduced lung capacity and this is a breath practice that has actually really helped me um, expand my ability to breathe deep and exhale deeply. So I'm just going to show it to you. I like to do it after uh, doing a breath practice like we just did or a brief meditation like we just did. So I'm going to sit here once again on my block, just making sure you can see my back, okay? And from here, I'm actually going to take my fists to the low waist. So right where the, the indent of the waist goes in for ladies or for gentlemen, it might be just the fleshy part and the back of the, of the waist. And what I want to do is I don't want to squeeze my shoulder blades back like this because that kind of cuts off the back of the lungs. You want to kind of let your elbows be nice and wide when you do this. And breathing in this time, trying to breathe all the way down into where you feel those fists. And a couple of nice deep inhalations like that. I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see. Um, so as I'm breathing down deep into the fists, it kind of allows me to access that lowest part of the lobe of the lung. And when we breathe low like that, it automatically fills up the middle and the top parts of the lung. So breathing nice and low can actually really help expand that breath capacity, increases circulation, allows the uh, lymphatic system to move a little bit more freely. So practicing that, I like to, to do this, like I said, after doing the visualization meditation, just because it slides that chaotic mental energy that we might have started with down into the body. So we're really able to expand and stretch the capacity for the lungs to breathe. Now I'm going to make my way over to the wall next. And um, the next few poses we're going to do, we're actually working on this line of energy that goes directly from our breastbone, which is where our thymus is. So this is a, thymus is a little organ located right behind the breastbone that when we stimulate it can actually increase the body's ability to fight off disease and illness. So you can start even by just tapping. I'm just making a little cup with my hand and tapping on the breastbone. And you can go kind of vigorously as you do this. Um, my, the practitioner that showed this to me said that, you know, it's, it's, you might have a little bit of redness on the skin. That's how you kind of know that you're tapping hard enough. And you might do this for a minute or two every single day, just stimulating that thymus. And then you might even work your way down this energy line in the body, which goes from the center of the breastbone all the way down the inner arm, down into the thumb side of the hand. So I'm just tapping here all the way down the length of the arm, waking up that meridian in the body. And I'm going down the inner arm and up the back of the arm. And again, you know, you can be kind of vigorous when you do this. Make sure you still breathe as you do this. Just tapping down the other side. I'm gonna do a few times on each side. We're gonna get into some poses that also stimulate this line as well. But just waking it up, waking up the circulation, in the lymphatic system. <sighs> then you might, you know, just rub down the arms a moment just to move that energy and also let your body know that you won't be tapping it anymore. <laughs> just take a few breaths here. Oh, I always feel so much better after breathing nice and deep like that and then waking up the circulation. So now we're going to get into some poses that actually help stimulate this as well. You can take this um, over to the wall. Um, you want to be about a arm's length distance away from the wall when you do this one. I'm going to do this kneeling. You can do this sitting in a chair. Kneeling is not good for you. You can do it standing as well. If you're doing it standing, just make sure you've got nice soft knees. You're not locking your legs out as you do this. So I'm an arm's length distance away from the wall and I'm going to start with my fingertips facing back behind me. So make sure your fingers aren't facing forward. They're facing behind you. And I'm really stretching through my fingers. Now the tendency is going to be to lock the elbow and the shoulder is going to want to roll forward like this. So make sure you bend your elbow. You're going to use that opposite hand to turn the upper arm bone back. So we're externally rotating the upper arm bone. And same thing, even when you're here, 
See if you can breathe nice and low, that nice deep belly breath or that back breath, whichever one feels good for you to be doing, but you wanna make sure you're not shoving your ribs forward. That's gonna be the tendency here. So soft ribs, you're only here for a few breaths. Stretching that whole line of energy all the way from the neck down to the fingertips, moving through the tissues of the lungs. And then nice soft elbow as you flip your fingers down towards the floor. If this feels too intense, just go back to that first one and do it again. Same thing, upper arm bone turning back behind you, stretch through your thumb, little bend in that elbow. <sighs> nice deep breath into the tightness in the front of that shoulder. And then as you're ready, you can bend the elbow. Make sure you release your hand facing the wall. That's the most important thing to remember. When you come out of this pose, hand faces the wall so you can keep that nice open chest in the front of the shoulder. Second position I'm gonna come into, I'm just gonna move a little bit closer to the wall here. And I'm about a foot, eight inches away from the wall. I'm gonna bring my hand back behind me. So my fingertips are in line with my shoulder. Once again, my shoulder's gonna wanna kind of roll forward like this, like you can see. So I'm gonna bend my elbow just to get that nice open rotation in the shoulder. And I really start to feel that stretch in the front of the shoulder when I do that. Stretch through your fingers, stretch through your thumb. Make sure you're not pushing your ribs forward, so soften the ribs and breathe into the front of that chest. Ah, the tissues of the lungs get so congested up here from sitting at the desk all day, reading everything we do that just kind of brings our shoulders forward. This can help to combat that. You can do this frequently throughout the day and you're not holding it for long. Remember, it's kind of intense, so you don't want to spend too much time here. Just a few breaths will do it. And if it feels okay, you might turn your chest a little bit away from the wall and keep your head in line with your sternum. And then to come out, same thing, make sure your hand is facing the wall. So I'm rolling my hand down the wall to come out. You just want to make sure you don't go up and out of these poses because you could tweak your neck out. So just go down the wall, go up the wall to come in, down the wall to come out. All right, let's do the second side. So same thing, just lining myself up. Scoot forward a little bit, lining myself up with the wall, arms like distance away turning my fingertips back and then taking my opposite hand and rolling that shoulder back nice and far here and turning the upper arm bone, softening, breathing into the back of the ribs, turning that upper arm bone, not locking the elbow and stretching through the fingers. Just 30 seconds, couple breaths here. And then second position, fingertips point straight down towards the floor. And again, not locking the elbow, trying to get the heel of the hand to the wall and turning the upper arm bone back. Breathing, nice deep breaths. And then to come out, palm faces down towards the wall to come out, so you're keeping that rotation. And then second position, I'm coming into a position where my hand, my fingertips are in line with my shoulder. So I got, I'm about eight inches away from the wall and again, my shoulder wants to roll forward, so I'm gonna bend that elbow, stretch through the fingers, bend the elbow, let the shoulder move back into the socket, and then nice deep breath into the top of the chest. And if it feels okay, you wanna go a little bit more, you might start to turn the body away from the wall, but make sure you're not locking that elbow. And keeping your head in line with the spine. <sighs> Stretching through the fingers. And then when it's time to come out after a few breaths, so let the hand slide down the wall. Good. And then just pausing for a moment, seeing how your shoulders feel after that. Oh, my neck looks like it grew about two inches after doing that. So just enjoying all that space that you created. You'll feel that circulation moving down the arms from a little bit of that, the tapping that we were doing before, but also from doing that nice big stretch that we just did. So enjoy that increased circulation moving through. So important for, for boosting immunity is making sure that our circulation is flowing well and freely. So our next position we're going to come into is a chest opener. I'm going to show you two different versions that you can do. So first, just and the mild version. So if you don't have blocks at home, this might be the one that you're doing. Um, I'm taking a roll in my towel or blanket. And I'm going to also Bring a second pillow. You could also just use a regular or a second blanket I'm using. You can also use a pillow of some kind if you have that at home. And I'm just putting that here. I've got a little bit of space between the pillow and the rolled blanket here. 
this roll is gonna go directly behind my shoulder blades. So right at the bottom tips of the shoulder blades um, is that's where the blanket's gonna go here. And I'm gonna slowly lower myself back so I keep my neck nice and protected, my eyes are forward. This is kind of the most mild version. So if you have any kind of upper back issues going on, lower back issues, any kind of uh, you know spinal fusion, anything you might have going on in your back, this might be the one that you want to start with. It's really nice, it's a deep chest opener, so I'm getting all that fresh air and circulation into the top of the chest, and I'm breathing here. It might also feel nice for you to bring the soles of the feet together and open. Now in these two poses that we're doing, yes, so good for our physical body to oxygenate the lungs and everything, but we're also working on the energy fields here too. Our bodies tend to fold in on themselves when they're feeling really scared or um, we're in fight or flight mode. So these restorative poses, even though they're very open energetically, they're showing the body that it's safe to soften. So each exhalation you have, you wanna be relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the head and the neck, and just allowing yourself to be held in the shape. Enjoy those nice deep breaths. So if this is where you wanna stay for the next few minutes, feel free to stay here. I'm gonna show the a little bit more advanced variation of this. Um, so, like I said, if you're happy there, please stay. But I do wanna show you this other one that I've been doing that has been really lovely. And I, um, you know, I don't do it every day. I might do it every few days because it is a little bit more intense. Um, but I wanted to show it because it's been so helpful. So very helpful for me. So this one you would do with a couple of blocks. So if you have two blocks, you can do it here. I've got my two blocks. They're on their highest edge, spaced about six inches apart. Kind of a classic um, Iyengar variation. And then whatever support you're using to sit on, you would put another six inches or so away. You have to adjust a little bit just based on body proportions, but you can do that in the pose. Now, if you um, have any kind of hyperkyphosis or a really forward head position like this, you might need a little more height under your head, so you might have a third block lifting that block up a little bit more, or you should just really st stay with that first variation that we have. Um, so for this one, I'm starting seated on my blankets or pillows, whatever you're using. You wanna have um, the blocks and the pillow set up to be about the same height, so make sure you're building this up high enough. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take myself back. My eyes are still forward, so I'm protecting my neck. And I'm going to center that first block between the shoulder blades. So it's right behind the heart. And this is a direct stimulation of that thymus again, which is behind the breastbone. So it's really, really good for immune boosting. And also, oh my gosh, it's such a wonderful release of the upper back. It's like getting a deep tissue massage, which is so important, especially for lung function. So we need to make sure that those muscles in the upper back are nice and open. So we can get those nice deep breaths. And in this position, it's a little more intense, but the longer you stay, the more the body will relax into this. I'm using cork blocks. You could use foam blocks as long as they're sturdy enough to hold you. And I'm kind of focusing on the spots that my body is touching the ground. So I'm focusing on the backs of the hands, relaxing and releasing. If this feels okay for you, your lower back is happy, you might even consider stretching one leg at a time. This gets into those tight hip flexors. I'm flexing through the foot. And the psoas muscle, which does also affect our breathing. So great place to stretch that out as well. So again, staying here for at least two minutes just to allow the body to relax and release into the shape. You can stay for longer if, it's ha if you feel happy in it. <sighs> but a great pose for relieving stress and anxiety as well. And then to come out, if you're in the, uh, the higher variation, you wanna make sure that you're protecting your neck. So bend your knees in, protect your head as it comes up and press your hands down into the floor to come up. If you're in the rolled blanket variation, you can just roll to your side and come up. And after each of them, I like to take a moment to just sit and enjoy all of that fresh open space. And all of these two poses are really great, like I said, for bringing the body out of that fight or flight reflex where we kind of fold in on ourselves and the tissues are holding onto that fear, kind of 
brings us back into that balanced, um, open posture so that we can allow any emotions or energy that needs to flow out of our body. It's not going to be able to flow if we're congested and we have this caving in of the chest. So we need to make sure that we're keeping our hearts open and allowing everything to flow, the good and the bad. Just let it come in and flow in and out of the body, processing it all. Okay. So our next pose, you're going to take your blankets or um, pillows off to the side. You're going to use your two blocks for this one. Again, if you don't have blocks at home, you could use two evenly shaped um, books if you have them. Also, another thing that would work is you could technically do this one without blocks. I just really love the feedback from the blocks when I do this. So I'm taking the blocks over to the wall and I'm putting them up on this angle. I've got this little baseboard over here that I kind of lean them on. It works without the baseboard as well too, but you're on a little bit of an angle here. And then we're going to take that arm action that we just practiced at the wall of this external rotation, just opening up our shoulders, right? So this is what it looks like when our arms are down normally. We're externally rotating the hands to get that nice free oxygenated breath. Um, so I'm going to take that into my downward dog now. So I'm over to the wall. I'm making these kind of mitten hands with my fingers, so stretching my thumb nice and wide, direct connection to the shoulder girdle. When we stretch our thumbs, it's easier for our shoulders to externally rotate, so really stretch those thumbs. I'm even turning my hands out a little bit on the block to really get that external rotation, and I'm making sure that the eye of the elbow, so the, the eye of the elbow joint here is facing towards the wall, so I'm really turning the upper arm out. And then as I come up and back, I'm going to tuck my toes, keep my arms externally rotated, so I'm going to take, keep an eye on them as I go up and back, and I'm lifting those knees up. I keep the knees really, really bent here, and I'm turning those upper arm bones and lifting the sit bones nice and high, so don't lock your legs here. It's important to, it's, you're trying to basically sit on the ceiling when you do this. So reaching back, coming into this inversion, following your breath as you're here. You might pedal through the heels a little bit if needed. But don't try to glue those heels down to the floor. Just focus on bending those knees and getting the hips up nice and high. And we're going to use that visualization work we did. So this time I'm pulling that energy up through the arms and exhaling, letting that energy spiral out through the sit bones and down the legs, clearing the energy field, breathing in, Drawing that energy up from the arms all the way into the upper back and the shoulders, and then exhaling, letting it go out through the mouth. You can use your sound here if that's helpful for you. Nice big sigh on the exhalation. And then slowly coming down, trying to let your knees touch down at the same time. Just pausing for a moment. And we're gonna go right back up and do that one more time. So hands to the blocks, turn the fingers out, turn the upper arm bones out, hands nice and wide. Stretch those thumbs towards one another and lifting the knees up and back, bending the knees, pushing the hands into the blocks and pulling that energy up from the arms. And exhaling, envisioning it spiraling out through the sit bones, reaching back through the spine getting all the benefits of an inversion here. So inversions are so good for boosting immunity. It really activates all of the systems in the body and so, so cleansing for the limbic system, the lymphatic system. So anytime your hips are higher than your heart, it's a great way to get all those benefits of being an inversion. And then finally, lowering those knees back down. So if you have any kind of uh, blood pressure issues, you want to just monitor how long you're staying in this pose, maybe a few breaths, come out of it, see how your blood pressure is feeling, make sure you're not feeling lightheaded or anything like that. Um, and with anything, we're going to do a couple more inversions today. With any of these poses we're doing, you're just kind of incrementally increasing the amount of time you spend in them. So, you know, if you come out and you did five breaths in it, you're like, oh, I'm feeling a little lightheaded, maybe tomorrow you try three breaths in it. And you just kind of generally you know, gradually build up the endurance to being upside down. Um, so in our next pose, we are going to go into another inversion. For this one, I'm actually going to uh, build kind of like a little staircase for myself. So I'm going to take my chair. Whatever chair you have is fine. I'm going to take my two blocks. You just want to kind of a lot of options when you do this one. I'm going to angle our camera up a tiny bit so you can 
see me. And I'm going to come into a forward fold. So I'm going to take, make sure my feet are nice and parallel as I do this. And I'm going to pull my chair close enough to me so that I can use the back of the chair first. So I'm going to fold my arms on the back of the chair. You can also have the chair facing the other direction if it's more comfortable for you. Little bend in those knees and reaching the hips back. So you're relaxing the head and the neck. Anytime we have our head supported in yoga, it's a great way to calm the nervous system. We're stimulating the parasympathetic, making our breathing a little bit more deep and slowing our heart rate down. So if this is enough for you, if you've got tight hamstrings and you're feeling that nice big stretch in the back and the hamstrings, this might be where you stay. If your blood pressure is okay and you want to go a little lower, you might slide your hands down to the chair seat. Same thing, relaxing the head and the neck. I love this position because, again, you can work with that energy clearing visualization of pulling now the energy up from the leg. So I'm pulling that earth energy up. And as I exhale, I'm releasing any tension out of the neck and the shoulders. It's almost as if you could uncork the top of your head and just pour out any tension that you're holding there, any stress, any anxiety. So using that visualization, breathing in through the legs, and then exhaling, just letting it go out through the crown of the head, letting go of worry, letting go of the fear of the unknown, letting go of trying to control everything. Just let it release out through the crown of the head. And like I said before, you can kind of use this as a staircase. You might release little by little. So you might put the head down on the chair seat with the hands on the blocks, softening the belly, coming deeper and deeper into your forward fold over time. And as you let go, the body might even start to expand a little bit more so that you could put your head down on the blocks itself. So you might stack your blocks up and put the crown of the head onto the blocks. I like having the head a little lower just so you can really get into that visualization of dumping everything out through the crown of the head. Um, but again, we're building up our ability to stay in an inversion. So you wanna make sure that you're taking care of yourself, pulling your shoulders up away from your ears, not locking your knees. You might even lift your toes a little bit here for a little bit of a deeper stretch of the back of the legs. So one more breath in here. And then to come up, just come back into that flat back position. So maybe walking your hands up on your blocks or back to your chair to begin with. But we want to, we want to avoid rolling up out of this pose just because we want to find and keep that space. And sometimes rolling up can make our backs um, a little bit more congested afterwards. So nice open space. Letting your blood pressure level out in this tabletop position. So you know, just letting your breathing return back to normal. And then when you're ready, you can come all the way back up to stand. And then from here, um, those two inversions are perfect for you to do. If you're a beginner to inversions, you don't flip upside down that often. That's a great place to start. If you have a bit more of an advanced practice, um, then you might want to spend more time in inversions. Um, many yogis believe that if you only do one or two poses a day, they should be inversions because there are so many benefits to them for the physical body, for the mental body. There's just so much going on in an inversion that we need to, um, we need to do them daily in whatever form you choose. So the next pose that I'm going to show you is a variation of a headstand which is safe for you to do because we're not putting any pressure on our head or our neck. So totally safe for anybody who has any kind of back issues. And it really allows you to get all the benefits of that inversion of that headstand practice without necessarily having to do something that's gonna compress your neck and your spine. So for this pose, um, I'm gonna ask that you bring your mat over to any piece of furniture you have in your house that you can easily slide your arms under. So a couch would work, a chair would work, even your bed would work. Um, if you're using your bed, you wanna make sure that you, um, I would say put 
an extra yoga mat or some blankets over the side just so that you're not putting your back into like a wooden frame or a metal frame. In yoga, our inversion practice is actually how we get cardiovascular endurance. So just like you wouldn't go out and run a marathon tomorrow after not doing anything for a long time, you're not going to try to hold this pose for 10 minutes. You're going to incrementally increase the amount of time you spend upside down. It's really, really important to remember. So we might try it for a minute or a minute and a half today. And then little by little, you can gradually build the amount of time that you spend upside down. Um, the body has to regulate circulation and blood flow the same way that we would have to do if we're doing an aerobic exercise. So it's a great way to get cardiovascular health and endurance without necessarily having to, to do things that maybe don't feel as good on your back or your spine. So to come into this pose, I'm going to show you the arms first, not under the chair so you can see what I'm doing. My fingertips are wrapped around my elbows, okay? This is to keep my elbows in line with my shoulders. It's really important. And then I'm going to pivot on my elbows to interlace my fingers. So what you want to make sure that your elbows stay in line with your shoulders. You don't want to do this. That's something I see happen a lot with people. As soon as they go upside down, their elbows do this, and then their neck and their shoulders do not feel good afterwards. So elbows in, and then... From there, you're gonna pivot. So I'm taking my elbows down to the floor. I'm gonna pivot on my elbows so that my, this is kind of like an I dream of genie position. You pivot on your elbows and then you bring your hands underneath the chair. My head's gonna go down, but my head's not gonna to touch the floor. I'm gonna bring the base of my neck. So if you bow your head forward, you feel that little bump on the top of your, uh, the top of your shoulders, right where it meets your neck. That's your C7 vertebrae. That's going to be touching the chair. Your head is not touching the ground. So folding my arms, pivot on my elbows, my head goes down. I bring that bump to the chair, the couch, whatever you're using. I press my arms down into the floor. I tuck my toes and I lift up. So hopefully you can see from where you are that my head is not touching the floor. I'm actually getting a nice little traction in my neck, which feels really good. Your job is to keep your knees nice and bent and get your feet super close as close as you can to the chair and lift your hips up. So if you have tight hamstrings, your knees might be really, really bent like this, and that's okay. Take a look at your feet and make sure that your toes are parallel. We can think about hiding your heels. So from where you are, you don't want to see your heels. And breathe. Let your head relax. Press your, shoulder, your arms down into the floor. Then lift your shoulders up away from your ears. And lift those hips up towards the ceiling like you're going to sit on the ceiling. This is so, so good. It's a full body engagement when we do this. So moving that energy, that life force throughout every single inch of that body. Breathing, sending nutrients and oxygen to the cells, releasing any tension in the head. A few more breaths like this. So keep lifting up. And again, if you're working with any kind of blood pressure issue, just, you know, regulate yourself. You can see how long it feels okay for you to hold it. If you start feeling any pressure in your head, maybe it's time to come down and just build up day by day. And if you really want more specific practices for you, we also have Lots of private teachers available on mysacredspine.com. We can, you know, make a more specialized uh, practice for you if you need it for whatever's going on. Okay, one more breath in, and then we're going to slowly walk those feet back a tiny bit and try to let your knees come down at the same time. Come up nice and slow, and then get nice and close to your bed or your couch, or your chair, and just folding the arms on the seat and breathing. Five breaths here. So you want to get your knees in close enough that you can get your hips down to your heels. Just modify child's pose, letting your blood pressure again level back out. A couple breaths. Relaxing the neck and the shoulders. And when you're ready, slowly coming up. Good. So um, after this, we're going to come into our 
final resting position. So I'm gonna actually, you can take your mat over to the wall again for this one. Um, you might not need your mat if you're comfortable lying on the floor, but you know, why not make it comfortable if you can? I also am gonna have something for my head and my neck. And for this resting pose, I'd like everybody to have an additional blanket of some kind. So whether it's an extra towel or an eye mask even would work for this, just make sure it's nearby. And I'm just gonna put it off to the side. So we're gonna practice legs up the wall. You can do this at any wall. Um, it might be a little bit challenging to get your hips all the way in. So you can decide what works best for you. The challenge is to get your hips in as close as you can to the wall. And then when you stretch out on your side, don't stretch out along the wall or else you're gonna get stuck in a weird position. You wanna stretch your body out towards the center of the room. So as you stretch out into the center, to kind of keep scooching your hips back. I'm doing this on a little corner, which is nice because I can get my feet kind of around the corner, but you know, you can do this at the wall too and just adjust yourself. So get those hips in nice and close, stretch yourself out into the center of the room, and then your head is gonna be supported on the pillow or the blanket, whatever you're using. The legs are gonna swing up. If you have any kind of low back issues or really tight hamstrings, you might wanna belt your thighs. You can put a yoga strap around your thighs or just like a tie or a regular belt. Keep your legs from flopping open. So this is your position, another wonderful inversion, another great pose to do if you're feeling stressed out and you just need a break. So this is the position that you wanna stay in. Again, you wanna rest for about two or three minutes. I'm adding in one extra thing here. The second blanket or towel is gonna to go over your eyes and your ears. So really tucking it in around the sides of the head and just allowing yourself to move inward, bringing your focus into the body. Palms should be facing up for now. And you can move back into that deep belly breathing. Letting yourself be held by the earth. Just surrendering to gravity, letting your bones rest. And if you're still feeling like you need a little bit more grounding, you might also cross your arms over your chest. So crossing at the elbows, bringing your hands, one hand to each shoulder, like you're giving yourself a hug. And then just letting the weight of the arms help you ground the energy. Breathing into the upper back, into the back of the heart. Letting any external sounds fall away. Pulling your senses inward. And seeing if you can become so quiet here. You can sense your own heart beating. And if you've decided to cross your arms, just make sure you change the cross of the arms at some point. Keep yourself balanced. Releasing the jaw, releasing the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. Just allowing yourself to be held. And then from here, you can slowly uncross your arms if you're doing that arm variation. And you can take a moment just to bring the soles of the feet together. So sliding the knees in towards the chest, opening the knees up and bringing the soles of the feet together. Baddha Konasana, butterfly position. Breathing down into the pelvic floor, releasing tension again into the hips, into the groin, into the jaw. 
just letting yourself be open and safe. And then slowly sliding your blanket off of your eyes. You might take a moment to just keep the palms up over the eyes. Blinking your eyes open behind the palms. Just gradually letting the light back into the room. You can bring your knees back together. Gently rolling your way onto your side. I always like to take a little twist after this. So I'm just gonna scoot back a tiny bit. You might scoot back like four or five inches from the wall. And then keeping your knees to one side and unfolding that top arm for a nice twist. If this is too deep for you. You might keep your feet on the wall as you're twisting. Taking a nice breath in here, exhaling, moving your knees back through center. And then over to the second side. You're trying to keep both shoulders down. So if your shoulder is popping up from the floor, then just sneak your feet back onto the wall for a moment so you're not going as deep in the twist. And then slowly rolling to either side making your way up to sit. Just come to sit on your blankets or your pillow for a moment. <sighs> Just taking some time to appreciate the effects of your practice. And knowing that these techniques are here to serve you in your journey of going inward, in your journey of feeling the full spectrum of whatever it is you're feeling at this time, there's no right or wrong way to feel. And just honoring yourself, showing gratitude to yourself for giving you this time to practice, for giving you this space to feel what it is that you're feeling And I offer these practices to you from the deep well of love that I hold for you all in my heart. I wish you blessings of peace and stillness and health and safety. And know that we are all in this together. Even though we are social distancing at the moment, we are here in this together. And if you need support, I hope that you will reach out to us um, in whatever capacity you may need. We'll continue to connect online and show up for each other in love and solidarity. So sending you lots of blessings from the Hudson Valley. I hope you're all using this time to more deeply connect with the planet. Uh, she is healing. Her skies are clearing. The waters are clearing. So, um, She's taking the much needed break that she needs and um, we are all being given this moment of reflection, deep reflection. And um, yeah, so I, I send you all so much love. And as I said before, please reach out if you need any additional support. We do have um, online private healing sessions to offer, whether that's for physical uh, ailments that you have. I'm also doing psycho-spiritual healing sessions um, as well, uh, which can uh, help uh, on a multitude of different levels. So whatever you need, we are here for you. And um, I love you. <laughs>